Hello and welcome to Kitterk Farms. We're back with another episode of Mercer County. And we need to get spraying on our soybeans that we got planted last episode. And so we've got the sprayer here in the shed and our last container of herbicide. I was really hoping that was going to go a little farther. Uh, but we've got almost 90% of a tank here. Should be enough to spray down these two fields that we've got, I'm hoping. So we're going to just run it right out here into this first field. Our corn is coming along quite nicely here. And our beans haven't quite come up yet, so we're going to spray a little bit of, I guess, pre-emerge here on the beans. We need to uh, just make sure that we don't get a ton of weeds here. I'm trying to think about... Whoa, we're going to clip that tree. I'm trying to think about the best way to approach this Field. I'm not quite where I wanted to be for that headland. I need to get that boom over just a little bit farther. All right, we got ourselves all backed into the corner here, and we're going to just take this up and spray this field real quick. So we should be able to make really quick work of this field. In fact, I'm almost curious if we'll be able to get this done in a single round here. It's probably not even worth setting up our GPS at this point just because by the time I get that all set up and I'm done monkeying with it, we'll already be done with this uh, field. And the next field is kind of at an awkward angle anyway, so we're just going to run this up uh, the normal way here. We're knocking out these weeds. I'm always surprised. We've already got a bunch of weeds popping up here. And I noticed something extremely interesting when I was moving between the menus today. And that is that crop prices have been adjusted on this map to be uh, somewhat more realistic, it looks like. And so if we look at the commodity prices menu, you can see things like corn are here at $3 a bushel, soybeans at 9 something a bushel. Uh, I think we do have a dry corn in here, though, that's uh, worth a little bit more potentially, you know, $3.50, $3.52 compared to our corn that's at, you know, 310, 330. And so these prices, especially for corn and soybeans, feel just a little bit more uh, in line with what you might see on the market. And so it'll be interesting to see how that plays out, um, given everything else that you're doing on the farm and all the other money we're spending, uh, if we're going to make enough money to sustain the farm or not. And so we're going to be very interested to see how well things do come uh, fall here on the map. So we unfortunately have got just this little strip left all the way down the length of the field and I do not have sprayer section control on this mod. On my uh, new series that we just kicked off uh, yesterday with uh, the Millennial Farmer map, I did make sure to go through and get sprayer section control configured so we'll have uh, a little bit more realistic of an experience there and uh, at some point I probably need to make the updates to this mod uh, but honestly I'm not really in love with this sprayer uh, it's a little bit wonky to drive and turn with the uh, articulating tongue on the sprayer here and so we'll probably try and find a different uh, sprayer to use next season maybe there's not a lot of good pull behind or three point mounted sprayers out there that I've seen, at least not American style ones. But I'd really like to uh, get something with sprayer section control. And I'm not sure I want to invest the time setting up a mod that I'm not a real big fan of with uh, sprayer section control. So we'll, we'll see what we're going to do for that next season. In the meantime, though, We've got to get this second field of beans sprayed here, uh, which should go pretty quick, although it's the a little bit of an awkward field because we're surrounded by terrain and trees and stuff. But as, as you can see, this articulating uh, tongue thing is a little bit awkward because this makes the sprayer just jerk all over the place. And it's really hard to predict where your sprayer is going to end up when you're trying to turn, especially when you're backing up, because I think it 
uh, forces the articulation back to the center point every time you back up. Alright, we're all unfolded here. <laughs> Let's go ahead and start spraying this field. I'm hoping we can make the corner up here without crashing into whatever's on the map boundary. Uh, while the deco there looks nice from a distance, I think it acts like a solid wall. So if we brush up against those trees, we're going to have some problems. Not that you really want to be brushing up against trees with your sprayer boom anyway. But we're going to try... There we go. Eyeball about where we need to be. Well, that worked out pretty well. And I'm a little bit wondering if we're going to be able to make this in one round or if we're going to have another situation where we've got the tiniest little strip left that needs to be dealt with. I think here I'm going to pull forward into the tree and then back up again just to make sure we square this away. We've got a nice wide spot between those trees. And I'm just going to do the same thing here for simplicity. Because otherwise we're going to put a boom into one of these trees and that's just uh, not going to work out so well. We're trying to avoid running over the trees today. And the good news is it looks like we will be able to finish this up with one round. Try and keep the spray out of the yard here. And so I'm hoping that applies to the way back up here as well. We're missing a little bit of a corner on our left as we make the turn but I think we're probably okay with the way that seasons and weeds work. I'm gonna just hope that that one little tiny spot that we have over there is not where we end up getting weeds. And I think this is gonna wrap up our spring for the year. So if we fold this back up real quick here, let's take a look at the map. We've got our cornfields are in their final growth state, it looks like. That can't be quite be right. Maybe they're one growth, no, they're one growth state before final. Good. Our soybeans have germinated, so they're now in the initial stage of growth here. And so I think everything on the farm is planted, growing, sprayed for herbicide. And so we probably just need to move the clock forward here a little bit. We're going to go ahead and just get this equipment put back up into the shed after a quick wash here. Oh, I thought our pressure washer was here. We drove past it. So now that we're done spraying for the season, let's go ahead and get this washed up real quick. And then we'll get everything stored up and start setting up for the fall season. So we've advanced time here into early autumn. Our corn is starting to get ready to go here. It's not quite dry enough yet, I don't think. If we look at the map in game here, we're still in the final growth stage, so just not quite ready for harvest, but that'll happen here soon. And our soybeans are also coming along nicely. They're a little bit further behind, but catching up quickly with the uh, short season soybeans that we have here. And so if we look at the planting map here in seasons, we can see, you know, our corn should really probably be ready here right as we get into mid-autumn, as well as our short season soybeans. Although we did plant them a smidge late, I think, so, you know, our soybeans might take a few more days to be ready, which is fine. And so we'll probably be able to start on our corn here in the next day or so. And so it's time to start getting some of that equipment prepped. Uh, I know we've kind of walked past some of our harvest equipment, but I don't know that we've really kind of dug into any of these mods. And so let's take a quick look at what we've got going on here. So we've got a 9660 here that we're going to be doing our harvesting with. 
This is a pretty cool uh, combine. Haven't used it a lot in the past. Uh, usually I go for things that are just a little bit bigger. And, but we do have a 12 row corn head here, which might be just a smidge uh, bigger than what you'd typically see on something like this. I think you'd typically see you know, more of an eight row uh, style setup on this combine. Um, but really it just depends on what kind of a planter you've got. And so with how we set everything up, I think a 12 row makes sense. And so we're just gonna pull this out of the shed here a little bit so we can do some maintenance on it and get everything all set up and ready to go. And the other thing that we need to do is get our tractor in here and set up on the gravity wagon. And so we are going to be using the uh, J&M Storm by JHHG in this series. Uh, we haven't really had a chance to put this through its paces. Um, I think I used it briefly on Flint Hills. And so we're going to be giving that a shot here in this series. And I know I'm going to get a lot of people asking about the Demco. Don't worry, we're going to find a spot to use the new Demco grain cart soon. I just felt like it was a little bit oversized for this particular map. And at least, maybe not for the map, but for the equipment that we're using at the moment. And so we will uh, definitely do that, just not on this farm at this point in time. We've got this uh, nicely sized 1050 to use here. And we're going to put that here on the 8530 uh, just because I want a lot of power to be pulling this thing around and getting it back and up and down the field pretty quickly. Um, I think we're just going to get this lined up out here, make sure that our tarps are all working good to go. And lastly, we've got our Peterbilt here. And we're going to go ahead and get this truck out of here and get it over, run it through the grain setup once here. I haven't actually been over to our grain leg since we started this save. And I just want to make sure that we're going to be able to actually pull through here without any problems. I think it generally will be coming from the other side there like so and so we've got the nice covered uh, pit area to be able to dump into and then we'll be able to just pull straight around here so I think this is gonna work out pretty good and so we're also going to bring the truck right up here into the yard I think and get this set up right behind our tractor. I'm not sure. I, I'm assuming both of these fields are going to get ready at the same time. And so we'll probably bring the truck right down in here on the headland when it's time to get going. So I think we've got everything all set up for harvest here. I know this is going to end up being a little bit of a short episode. We did a little bit of spring. We did a little bit of prep work here on the farm. Next episode, we're going to dive right into harvest here, though. So that's going to be exciting. However, that's all for today. Kedrick, out. Um, we're a little bit too close to those trees. I'm hoping I can make the turn. Nope. 